Angela, would you like to say something? I'd love I would. Good. So I'm Angela Keys. Um, Dwayne and Arlita live pretty close to us when we were growing up. They're basically like adoptive grandparents for my brother, sister, and I. Um, they were wonderful to have in our lives. I remember going, one of my most um, things that I remember the most about Dwayne is when we used to go hiking out at Backbone State Park and Makokota Caves in Iowa. And he would teach us about the plants as we went walking and um, used to carry us on, our, on his shoulders when we would get tired. And I just remember feeling larger than life when we were, when you were on his shoulders because he was so tall and we were so little. Um, but I always enjoy those memories and want to be able to, you know, give something like that to my kids. We're taking them out in, um, to the parks and showing them nature, just like he used to show us. Thank you. Um, Let's see, is that Pete, is that you? Yes. Uh, that was my daughter, Angela. Oh, okay. Uh, and and I'll, I'm gonna talk about a time that uh, Dwayne and Arlita took us backpacking. Uh, we went out to Colorado and, and loaded everything up and we hiked up into the mountains and uh, we were there for three days and two nights. And we took enough food for, so we'd have plenty to eat, except Dwayne said we were gonna catch all the trout we wanted. So that's what we were gonna have for, for supper both nights. And sure enough, the first day uh, we caught trout like it, like it, we caught more trout than we needed. And uh, had plenty of the trout the first night. And the second day, uh, Dwayne gave his fly rod to Angela and I had my fly rod and we could not catch fish that day. Uh, I went back at lunchtime and uh, I said, Dwayne, I've got one trout. There's all of us to eat. And he says, oh, don't worry about it. And I said, but you gave your fly rod to Angela and she's out there she's out there traipsing around the mountains. And he says, don't worry about it. So I went out and fished for the afternoon and I think I caught one more fish. And, and these trout were small. These were, these were little brook trout. And there were, well, there were uh, six of us to eat that, you know, we had, had to have food for six of us. And I came back for supper time and I had one more trout. And I said, Dwayne, it's going to be pretty slim pickings for supper tonight. And he says, oh, no, it's not. I said, well, we only have two trout. And he said, oh, don't worry about it. And I said, Wayne, I only caught two trout today. And he said, well, go look over there in the stream next to that big boulder. And I went over to the stream and there in the stream was a stringer full of trout. I mean, more, more brook trout than we were gonna eat. And I said, <laughs> What happened? I mean, you gave your fly rod to Angela to use today. He says, oh, well, I used my favorite pole today. And I said, your favorite pole? And he said, yeah, my good one. And he says, it's over there. And there leaning up against a tree was about a six foot piece of willow branch that had a piece of line and a hook on the end of it. And Dwayne had gone out and caught grasshoppers and put them on the hook and he crawled up to the stream and put the, the, the grasshopper on the surface of the water and he caught more fish than Angela and I together. And he said, Ready? you know, I felt like I was a little boy back when we used to take the cattle up to the high country in the summertime. He says, that's what we always did then. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just never forget that about Dwayne. He, he, was, he was so humble and, and so full of life. And he really knew how to catch trout. <laughs> Thank you that, for that beautiful story. Laura, did you want to say something? Laura Torgensen? Sure. Uh, even better on the catching fish front, I remember being up at the car's land and uh, Dwayne just sticking his hands in the little narrow 
shallow stream and just catching them with his hands over and over again. So that was always amazing. Um, the outdoor life was always a big thing with the cars and with Duane especially. And I had two different trips with just Duane and then like one other person, um, their nephew Garrett. And um, I remember climbing on Compagre with him and other backpacking trips that were just wonderful. Over all the years, there were so many campfires and so many sing-alongs and um, special times. And a lot of it was linked to outdoors, but we had so many years in the church in Cedar Rapids together and um, many other life experiences. Um, he was a hugger and a wonderful person. And I know that when they had all those servants in Ethiopia that Arlita told me that it was so cheap that they wanted to give as many jobs as possible to as many people as possible. And that was why they had a gardener and a cook and many other people that worked for them so that they could provide jobs. Um, I'm sure they benefited as well, but it, it was a great gesture on their part. I will miss them both so much. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Penny and Eno, did you wanna say something? Uh, yes, sure. So they, they came up to the discussion group, the Black Canyon discussion group, UU Black Canyon discussion group. And very regular did they come Wednesday, Wednesday night. And Dwayne and Arlita were both wonderful contributors, with very sage comments about the topic. And uh, our topics were very diverse. And um, Everybody there was a, a month intellectual, and I'll say um, they they just really contributed so much. But yeah, about the hugs, I remember getting a hug from him. I looked forward to them coming because I get a hug, and it was so uplifting. It uh, uplifting people, and both of them um, models for humanity. Both of them. Uh, one time I know I, I said, well, why don't you stay overnight? Why don't you just stay overnight here? And, and then you don't have to drive home, you know, in the dark. And they said, well, no, no, no. We have, we were going to serve, um, what was it? Meal, the meals, meals in, in Grand Junction the next morning. So yeah, they, they did that. Thanks, Penny. Dave, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I would like to say something. Thank you. Um, now that I can talk again, uh, I was pretty choked up. Um, uh, Dwayne was more genuinely happy to be alive than anyone I've ever met. And one of his biggest joys was meeting a new person as though they were each in a new universe for him to get to know. Uh, he used to quote a philosopher whose name I forgot, um, but he said, all genuine human experience is meeting. And uh, Duane was a student of process theology, as was this philosopher. And, and in process theology, creation is not a done deal, but it, it's ongoing. And the divine is not a coercive God, but a persuasive one, coaxing everything in the universe into deeper and closer relationship. And Dwayne always wanted deeper and closer relationship. And he welcomed people compassionately and genuinely without prejudice or reservation like nobody I've ever met. And I'm lucky to have been his friend. That's all. Thanks, Dave. Katie, did you wanna say something? Yes, I do. I'm sorry. That's the, uh, my name is really Angela. I work down at the soup kitchen with you. Okay, I I was looking to see if you were joining us. <laughs> oh, I jumped up and I heard Angela, but it was another Angela. And oh, that fishing story, I loved it. Anyway, I'm gonna try. I would describe. Can I go next? I'm sorry. I need to regain my composure. I'll yeah. Go next. Yeah, okay. can somebody, does somebody want to step in and, and share a memory while, while um, Angela gains her composure? I wanted to say that um, I thought it was really funny, the story that Pete said, because whenever we would go up to the land uh, by the cabin, um, 
and my grandpa would take us fishing. I was not good at it, but he, um, we would, he would give us his hats and we would go around hitting grasshoppers with the hat. <laughs> and then he would come and pick them up because I was too grossed out to touch a bug. <laughs> but he would come and um, pick up the bugs and put them in a little thing. And then we would hook them and go fishing with them. And I also wanted to show that I took some of this African violet and I've been doing research for a long time. I even bought grow lights and everything <laughs> and I've been taking care of them. Anyways, that was it. <laughs> Beautiful. Thanks. Katie, are you uh, not? Sorry, Katie, I keep calling you Katie. Right. Angela, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay. I would describe Dwayne as a beacon on a dark, dreary night. He first appeared at the old soup kitchen on Third and White. I was just starting there myself some 20 years ago. And one of the volunteers that ran the second and third Saturday cruise came in and quit. I was in the basement regaining my composure then too. <laughs> And then here appeared Dwayne. I didn't even have time to pray, and my prayer was answered. He said that he was from the Unitarian Church, and he had a crew of people that wanted to come help. I said, how convenient. The second and fifth Saturdays just opened. And lucky for the congregation, he only signed up for the second. But he said he wanted to come in on Thursday, on one day a week so we could learn how it could work and he could better guide his crew. Well, Dwayne always managed to get plenty of help on his Saturday mornings. He had the men's cooking crew come help him for a while and he brought the youth group to serve. Then when it got too much for him to oversee everything, he brought Rebecca in to help organize. Then when she moved on, he brought Chris, who is currently guiding the Unitarians on the second Saturdays now. Chris and crew do a fantastic job, but Dwayne still helped. He took his volunteer job very seriously and never let us down. As you all know, Dwayne was very intelligent as are most of the Thursday volunteers past and present. So lots of debating occurred on Thursday. Dwayne had a way of being able to reach everyone, no matter their intelligent level. Everybody was special. I love that about him. His hugs became a Thursday must. One hug could carry you through the whole week. He was often the first one to start cooking and the last to leave because he would help with the dishes too. He was a great cook, but he looked, loved visiting with the people we served. What better place to do that than in the dish hole? He and Barbara have washed a lot of dishes together along with Tom. Tom and Barbara miss Dwayne, his energy, and his inspiration. Dwayne brought so much love with him. Wow. What he taught us about the human heart and how beautiful life can be when you just show someone you care. How much healing can occur when you genuinely care enough to listen. How another person is feeling. Dwayne hated to see waste. Sometimes it was hard to convince him that it was better, might be better off to be thrown something away than to serve it. Cook it long enough, it'll be okay. In the dish hole, he would see people throwing away food and that would bother him terribly, but it never stopped him from coming in Regularly, regularly and making sure that the people were fed. Dwayne was big on recycling too and would take the tin cans to recycle on a weekly basis. 
He loved taking extra food he had to the blessing box over by the Unitarian Church. Up to the end of his days helping at the soup kitchen, he would get to that blessing box. Swollen knees. And he just kept going and giving and caring. What an inspiration to all of us. One guest put it, Twain was one that reminded us everything's going to be all right. He was so kind, so funny. Twain was good to his fellow man. And he would put a, had a way of putting everyone at ease to relax and be yourself. Dwayne loved his family and getting to spend time with them. I remember the first time he was heading to Mexico, Mexico after I met him. He told me he was going to see his Mexican sweethearts. What I thought. <laughs> well, it was his grandchildren. Dwayne loved everybody, but he loved his Mexican sweethearts. You all meant the world to him. He enjoyed being with you and your grandpa and all and your other grandpa. He loved going to Mexico. He said all the hugs and kisses, just pure love. He was so sad when Adelina was in that horrible bus, bus accident. He had all of us at the soup kitchen praying for everyone's recovery, physical and mental. It was a horrible accident and we are glad you made it, Adelina. He was excited when Ricardo came to live with him and then go to the university. Then you both ended up in Kansas. That made him so happy. Now, Ricardo, you're all the way in Japan with your beautiful wife and your sweet Leonardo. He sure enjoyed visiting with you too and your beautiful baby. His hugs were so strong. I'm sure you felt them virtually. Oh, and Nathan, on Thursday mornings one summer, Dwayne was a loyal volunteer, so he still came to the soup kitchen that summer. But he brought Nathan, and Nathan was about to, Nathan was quiet, and Nathan was quick. It was sure fun watching those two navigate the morning. Dwayne was so proud of his sons, Don and Dan, and their wives as well. He and our lady did a good job raising the family and can now rest knowing that their le legacy is in good hands. Our kitchen boss wanted to say, I think Dwayne was a caring person. He always gave great hugs, smart, kind, personality, great coworker, and great cook. I am sure going to miss him. May God be with him and have angels be with him always. Eric. And may the angels comfort all of you as you grieve the loss of both Dwayne and Arletta still too. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. That was beautiful. Ricardo, are you still here? Did you want to close? Did you want to play the ukulele before we extinguish the chalice? Yes, ma'am. I would love that. <laughs> So this is a song that um, I, I heard it again a couple of weeks ago. Well, a couple, like a week ago, let's say. And it just made me think so much of Grandpa. It, it made me think of um, how much Grandpa understood life and uh, you know, the cycle of life and how much he, uh, he hoped for, 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 uh, us as a, as a human race to 
figure our stuff out and uh, stop killing each other and learn to live as uh, anyway. Um, the the song is blowing in the wind by uh, Bob Dylan, and um, I hope the quality is good enough that you can appreciate the song. And if it's not good enough, just go and listen to it. It's a wonderful song. <laughs> How many roads must a man walk down before you call him a man? How many seas must a white dove say, sail, sail? She sleeps in the sand How many times must the cannonballs fly Before, before they're forever banned The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind The answer is blowing in the wind how many years can a mountain exist before, before it is washed to the sea? How many years can a people exist before they're allowed to be free? How many times can a man turn his head? He just doesn't care The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind The answer is blowing in the wind How many times must a man, man look up before he, before he can see the sky? So one man have before he can hear people cry. How many deaths will it take till he knows that too many that people have died? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Yay, thank you, Ricardo. I'm so proud of you. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thank and you so now, much. Now, let us. Uh, Let us go ahead and close out our chalice. To my old brothers and to my old blue sky, I'll now give these last few molecules of I and you who sing and you who stand nearby I do charge you not to cry guard well our human chain watch well you keep it strong as long as sun will shine and this our home keep pure and sweet and green for now i'm yours and you are also 
Thank you, everybody.